Hey there, this is Miss Caitlin from Bebo Kids Art Academy and I'm here to share with you today a quick drawing warm-up. Now in our warm-ups before our classes, we will usually go over an art fundamental or learn a little art history or do a creative exercise or learn about a contest that's happening in our community or in the world. Today, we are going to learn about light source and shadows while learning a little bit about daylight savings time. Without further ado, let me go ahead and switch to my desk and we can go ahead and get started. Now, for our warm up today, we are learning something that's a little bit more technical. For this, we're again learning about light source and shadows. Depending on the time of day, a shadow is going to look different. I'm sure you've maybe noticed it yourself as you go and you walk outside at one point of the day and you look down, you see your shadow, it looks a little bit shorter, but maybe at another part of the day, your shadow looks much longer. Now, this is all due to the position of the sun, which is our light source. So let's first go over that. What is a light source? Now, a light source is just a place or an object, something where light is coming from. The, easy, the biggest and easiest example in our lives is probably the sun as it shines onto the planet Earth. Now, what is a shadow? Well, a shadow is what happens when light from the light source, so when light from the sun is unable to reach a certain part because the object of some kind is blocking its way. So our little ball here is blocking light from the sun from reaching the ground and it creates this shadow, it's dark. Now, depending on the time of day, which means depending on where the sun is in the sky, our shadows are going to look different. So at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the sun is at the highest point in its sky. And that means that our shadow is gonna probably be directly under us. But as the sun starts to move on into the western part of the sky, our shadows start to elongate because now it's on a different part of the sky and the shadow has become longer. So this is a little tricky to kind of think about if you've never thought about it before, but we're gonna do a drawing exercise to kind of practice seeing how the light source, when it changes, it'll also change the shadow from the object. Now, what does this have to do with, it, with daylight savings? Well, daylight savings is all about the sun and when it's gonna be up. Let's go ahead and get a paper ready and I'll tell you a little bit more. I'm gonna turn my paper today uh, vertical up and down just so that I can show you our examples that we're gonna draw. Now in daylight savings, this is something that a lot of countries in North America or even Europe, sometimes Australia, will even use to sort of help there be more daylight in a day. So especially in the winter time or in the summer, um, the Northern Hemisphere or really anywhere on Earth, it really depends on the season that it's in, but it'll have more or less sunlight. Daylight savings is meant to save the daylight. Now what'll happen is countries will either push the time forward or backwards one hour. Usually in the spring, countries will push the time forward by one hour, so that way there's more daylight. And then in autumn, they will push the time backwards an hour so that they can catch the daylight in the morning and have a longer day, or at least as much sunlight as they possibly can get. All right, so I'm gonna be drawing with markers today, but I want you to draw with a pencil just so that uh, you can erase things as you need, but I'm just gonna draw with the markers so that you can see what my pencil lines are doing. So for our first object, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take your pencil and simply draw a circle somewhere on your paper. It doesn't need to be in the same spot as me. This is a warm up after all, so there's no pressure. We're just trying to figure out how things should be. Now this object is, you know, it can be a ball, maybe it's, I don't know, a basketball. You can decide what you want it to be, but it's just gonna be a circle for me. So there's our object. Now we need to decide where our light source is gonna be. Let's use the example of 12 p.m., so 12 in the afternoon, lunchtime. I'm gonna use different colors so that you can tell which part is which. So our light source, again, that's the sun, it's where light is coming from, is going to be the sun. And at 12 o'clock, the sun is at its highest point in the sky, so we want it to be right above the object. So now we kind of have to think, well, how can I tell where the shadow is going to go? Well, if our light source is shining light, and we'll just draw the little rays of the sun here, onto our object, we can tell where the shadow is going to be because of where the object is going to block it. I will use another color so that you can see how that works. 
So I'm going to draw a diagonal line kind of to show where the shadow is going to be right here. I can figure out then where it's going to be. So if light from the light source is shining onto our object, it's almost like we're playing connect the dots with our object here. We can see that once it kind of hits these sides, we can see where the shadow is going to be on the ground. Now our ground today is very loosely just the paper, but if you extend that, you just continue that diagonal line, making sure that it's touching the sides of the object, you will see that we kind of have this space here on the bottom, and that's going to become the shadow. Now, when we are drawing a shadow, you also have to think about the shape of the object and what kind of shadow it's casting. So ours is a circle today, as we've created, which means our shadow is going to end up being very curved, kind of almost as if the circle is, you know, squished underneath. So this, to me, it kind of helps to think of it like a cone, which is curved on the bottom. So kind of draw your curved lines out like that, and a big curved line around. And there we have the shadow. Now, depending on, you know, what your object is made out of, you are also going to see a highlight. Now, a highlight is on the object where the light from the light source is hitting it directly. So it's going to have like a little, you know, white spot, a little shine. Um, if it's something like a beach ball, you've probably seen this before, like a little white highlight or a little white shine, something shiny on the beach ball. For this, I'm simply going to draw this in with a yellow marker so you can see where it would be. It'll usually be a little highlight right there on the object. You will also have a shadow on the object itself. Instead of just having one that's cast onto the ground, the object will also have a shadow. And this is also uh, determined by where the light source is in the sky or wherever it may be. So our light source is shining here and it's hitting our object directly here, but light from the light source isn't able to hit this part of our object because it's simply too far away. It's on the opposite side. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a shadow on the object here. Now, because our object is a circle or a ball, a sphere, um, the shadow is going to end up looking more like a crescent moon shape. So again, kind of figuring out where that light is not able to hit on the sides, you can just draw a crescent shape. And that's going to be where the shadow on the object is going to go. I will fill that in just so that you can see and remember this is our shadow. If you would like, you may also take your pencil or even after warm up, you can fill this in with color too, if that would help you remember. Now, of course, in real life, the shadow is maybe not always this hard set. Maybe it's not so harsh. Maybe it looks like it's blended in a little bit or it looks smooth, like it transitions between um, the highlight, medium color, and the shadow, but for today, we're just gonna label it and kind of show it that way. Now on to the next part. So as our light source starts to move, the shadow is also gonna move with it. So wherever the light source is, the shadow is always gonna adjust to where that's gonna be. They go hand in hand. So let's draw another circle, another sphere, somewhere on your paper. Here's mine. And now let's place that light source, how we saw in our example, over here. So now it's in a different part. It's shining from a different part of the space. So we'll do the same thing again. We're going to kind of draw some lines here as they almost touch the sides of the object to determine where that shadow is going to go. Okay, so we've got one side there, it almost completely touches. And we have this one over here. Now, I think I may have drawn my circle really, really big. So my shadow is going to end up going off the side of my paper here. And that's fine. And how do I know that? Well, I know that light from the light source isn't able to hit this part of my object. So what I'm going to have to end up doing is drawing big curved line, because again, we almost want it to be like a cone, but our cone is very stretched out right now. 
all the way over a big curve like this. Because again, our light from our light source is kind of shifting that as it goes. That shadow is going to become more stretched out and elongated. This also is going to change where the highlight and the shadow is on the object itself. So now, instead of our highlight being all the way up here, it's going to match wherever the light is coming from on the light source. So that's going to be on the left side of the object. As well, the shadow, it's still going to be a crescent shape, but it's not going to be on the bottom. Now it's going to be more on the right side of the object because it's the opposite of the light source. So again, kind of using the sides of that object where the light source, or rather where the light from the light source isn't able to hit those sides, you can draw in your crescent shape. Again, I'll just lightly fill this in so that you can see very clearly where we would want the shadow to go. Now, I would encourage you to kind of see if you can do each hour of the day and see where the sun and how the shadow will kind of change how each other look. So if the sun, for example, was over here and our object was over here, the shadow would become on the left side and it would cast a shadow on the left. You could make a whole chart kind of showing how the sun and the shadows, how the light source and the shadows will change in relationship to each other. Now, as far as daylight savings goes with these um, light source and shadows, daylight savings is super helpful in some ways, and then for some people, they determine it not to be super helpful. So with the sun being up in the sky as early as it is, um, especially in the summer, it's really helpful for like businesses uh, to try and, you know, if they're selling things to other people, it helps them sell things to people as they're getting off of work. There's more daylight. People want to be out more when there's daylight, but it's not super helpful for people who are like farmers, who are, is, their entire livelihoods depend on, you know, the rising and setting of the sun. So it also, for some people that get a lot of sun, um, like Southern California or where I come from, Arizona, um, most of Arizona doesn't really follow daylight savings because it's hot all the time, we get a lot of sun, and there's just no need to try and save daylight. There, we've got enough of it already. And I think a similar sentiment is felt in Southern California is that oh, we get enough sun already. I'm not sure that we need to try and save any of it. But for people who live in the more northern parts of the hemisphere, like people who live in Canada or Washington state, they actually in the winter don't get a lot of sunlight. So they try and save some of it, uh, particularly in the summertime when they push their hour forward, or rather in the springtime when they push their hour forward, they're trying to get as much daylight as they can, and they do. The sun really doesn't set until about eight-ish in the evening uh, in those very far northern parts. So again, very fascinating. Uh, a lot of it with daylight savings, you're probably gonna run into it depending on where you live. Um, if you're like me, I actually didn't have to follow daylight savings until very recently when I moved to California here, but it's really fascinating stuff and it really draws your attention into how light source and shadows work in relationship to each other. So I hope you enjoyed this warm up. I know there's a lot of very technical things that we discussed today. Uh, maybe try sketching out you know, different objects with your light source and kind of determining where the shadow would be. It's a really important exercise, especially in artwork when you're trying to draw things um, realistically or have them uh, look like a drawing has depth. It'll help with those kinds of things. Knowing where your shadows belong is super important in developing your skills as an artist. Again, I hope you have fun. Try drawing more shadows and light sources on your own, and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye everyone.